it's grass that I've dried out and then I've had a little bit of moisture too. Trying to get the right moisture content is the whole trick to making pellets. It'll stay together in a ball. I also have some here that's just dry and this is the way that I rake it up. You can see that that doesn't hold the shape at all and it's that's dry and straw. Then I have some here that's decidedly too wet. You know that that's sort of almost mushy. So uh, I find that it's better off to make it a little a little bit on the wet side and then put a little bit of dry to get it to the ideal circumstance. So what I do is I take a bucket, any old bucket's going to work, and I fill it to a preset amount with the material I'm going to pelletize. And then I add in a certain amount of water. You can either spray it in and mix it up or just pour it in and mix it up. But it's a predetermined amount of water. And I get this sort of, uh, let's say, this recipe, this formula for what I think is ideal. And I have um, a spray bottle so if it's not wet enough, I can make it wetter and dry material so I can make it drier. And I'm going to show you um, what the pellets look like when they're just right, when they're too dry, and when they're too wet. To begin, I'm warming up the dye. That's the part of the machine where the grass is compacted into pellets. The process of pelletizing, simply stated, revolves around the complex chemical compound present in all plant cell walls called lignin. Lignin is the glue between the plant cells. The force and pressure used to compress the grass into the dye creates heat. The heat turns the moisture contained in the grass into steam. The steam transports the lignin throughout the compacted grass and becomes the glue that cements the particles into pellets. As the dye heats up, we can begin to feed material into the pellet mill a little faster. Next I'll inspect the pellets we've made so far. We could probably burn these okay, but they're not as hard as normal, nor are they shiny. The lignin has not been transported throughout the entire pellet. So we'll place these pellets back into the mill now that the dye is at the proper temperature. The steam rising is an indicator that the pellet process is working. The temperature of the dye is now nearly ideal. The pellets being produced are smooth, shiny, and very hard. They're also quite warm. Now we can feed grass in at a faster rate, making sure not to let a bridge block the inlet and stop the flow of pellets. Here's an example of a bridge blocking the flow of material. This material is also too dry. If it were run through the mill, lack of moisture means it would exit the mill as particles, not pellets. Try to add some water. The other extreme is too wet. Too much moisture and the grass flows around the rollers rather than through the dye. Add some drier material to correct this problem. Okay, so this is what they're like. Coming out, out, they're high. <laughs> okay, so that's an example. They've cooled off a few minutes now. They're still warm, but it's a good idea what they look like. 